Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little story about wheat in America. And I've always wondered, like, why are all these people in the States getting gluten intolerances, like, right and left? Like, everybody knows someone who can't eat gluten. And it didn't used to be like that. Um, like, back in the olden days where our grandparents were around, like, nobody was allergic to gluten. And I'm gonna tell you why. If you do have a gluten sensitivity, you might have noticed that if you go travel to Europe or any other country, you can eat gluten and it doesn't cause the same irritable bowel or bloating or digestion issues as it does in the States. I'm gonna tell you why. Pretty Okay, I want to address this one because not only is it just complete misinformation, but it can be really harmful to the community of people that have celiac disease, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, or a wheat allergy. So the first thing is she is not differentiating between what she's actually talking about here. Um, she actually says allergy, she says sensitivity, and she says intolerance. So which one are you talking about? Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition, uh, a wheat allergy is an allergy, and non-celiac gluten sensitivity is a sensitivity. You can't just lump those all into one and you need to be specific about what you're talking about. So this can be really harmful to be telling somebody if they have celiac disease or if they have a wheat allergy, oh, hey, when you go to Europe, by the way, you can eat the wheat just fine. No, the wheat in Europe still has gluten, it still has wheat protein. So if you have celiac disease, if you have a wheat allergy, it's not true that you can just go to Europe and eat the wheat safely. I've covered this more extensively in another wheat myth video that I did, but there are different strains that are more prevalent in the US versus Europe that might have more gluten in certain strains than others. So non-celiac gluten sensitivity isn't something we completely understand yet, but it could be that the strains with uh, the lower amounts of gluten could be better for people with that sensitivity. But that isn't just unique to just European countries either. Obviously, we grow wheat in both places. We import, and import it and export it. Uh, European countries import a lot of wheat that's grown in the U.S. So to just say that all the wheat in, the, in Europe is fine and U.S. it's not doesn't make any sense because these aren't just completely separate supplies of wheat. A lot of it is imported and exported. Also, the thing about you know, back in the day, people not having this. I mean, this is a newer thing that we are better at diagnosing now. We didn't even understand that celiac disease was an autoimmune condition until like the 1990s. So obviously, just because you didn't know somebody back in the day that had it doesn't mean that they didn't have it. We just didn't understand what it was and it wasn't being diagnosed. Obviously, more people being diagnosed and there being more products out there for those people is a good thing, not a bad thing. So of course she didn't provide any evidence and she's saying that it's the more modern wheat strains that are responsible for this. If you're claiming that, you need to be providing evidence of how that's the case and how that's unique to only wheat in America because obviously there are newer strains in many different countries. This isn't something unique to the US. Researchers actually looked at wheat strains over the past 120 years and found that the gluten content has remained constant. In addition, they found that environmental conditions actually had a greater influence on protein composition than changes caused by breeding. Celiac disease is more prevalent in Europe than it is in the US, so how is it American wheat that's causing it? 